Hello viewers, in this session uh, we will discuss the concept of uh, limits of complex functions uh, and uh, their continuity. Uh, and uh, we will uh, begin with limits. Uh, the limit of a complex function as the variable uh, approaches a fixed complex number a in its domain uh, is defined uh, in a similar fashion uh, to, uh, to the limits of uh, functions uh, from R 2 to R 2. Okay. So, um, limits in fact, the concepts are the same. Okay. So, uh, we define uh, so firstly limits of complex functions okay. and uh, the definition. Okay. So, let f from uh, d to c okay, uh, be a function. A complex function, so d is contained in C. Let d contained in C, okay, and let f from d to C be a function, and let uh, z naught be a limit point of the set d of the domain of the function. Okay, so a complex number. L is said to be well, yeah, is said to be a limit of the function f as the variable z approaches uh, z naught if. Uh, for each epsilon positive, okay, there is uh, a corresponding delta positive such that uh, modulus of f of z minus l is strictly less than epsilon whenever z belongs to d and uh, 0 strictly less than the modulus of z minus z naught strictly less than delta is less than delta. Okay. So, this definition okay, uh, is similar to uh, the definition of limits of functions uh, from R 2 to R 2. So, this is similar to definition of limits of functions from R 2 to R 2 okay. and uh, instead of the modulus of the complex number in that case we have uh, the, the norm of, uh, um, of the uh, number okay, uh, or, or the ordered pair in R 2. Okay. So, the norm of uh, f of uh, x, x y minus um, you know uh, the limit l okay, in R 2 etcetera. Okay. So, uh, with that change uh, this definition is the same. In fact, uh, these definitions agree because the topology of the complex plane uh, is the same as the topology of R 2 okay. and, uh, and hence uh, and also since the limits uh, depend of upon the concept of limits depends upon the topology of the underlying space the uh, the limits are uh, one and the same another way of rephrasing this definition is that uh, l is said to be limit of f as z approaches z naught uh, if for each epsilon greater than 0 okay so i'll just write the last uh, statement here if for each if uh, so dot 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 if for each epsilon greater than 0, okay, uh, there is okay, uh, there is a uh, delta positive such that uh, whenever z belongs to 
d intersection the domain intersection the deleted neighborhood of z naught of radius delta okay uh, we have that um, f of z belongs to uh, a ball of radius at most epsilon centered at the complex number l okay so in that event we say that um, l is the limit of the function f as z approaches z naught okay and uh, we write this as limit as z goes to z naught uh, f of z is equal to l owing to the notation we are familiar from uh, real analysis. Okay. And um, if no such l exists okay, then we say that f of z does not uh, have a limit. Uh, as z approaches z naught okay uh, or in other words f of z uh, does not uh, the limit of z goes to z naught f of z does not exist okay so terminology is already familiar to the viewer from uh, real analysis okay and here is an example uh, uh, if you have f of z is equal to 3 z squared for modulus of z less than 1 and 3 for modulus of z equals 1. Okay. So, f is a function from b 0 1 bar to c let us say okay. and um, in this case okay, the limit as z goes to uh, 1 of f of z Okay, uh, is equal to 3. So, it exists and the limit is equal to uh, 3 okay. and, um, and the limit uh, as z goes to z naught f of z does not exist for any uh, z naught with modulus of z naught is equal to 1 and z naught not equal to plus or minus 1. Okay. So, this function is defined on the uh, closed unit disc. Okay. So, that is the closed unit disc. Okay. It is something like 3 z squared on the inside okay. and then it is defined to be the complex number 3 uh, for all of the uh, unit circle. Okay. So, of course, we know that 3 z squared tallies with 3, 3 z squared approaches 3 only when uh, z is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay. And for others, um, if, if you have uh, z is e power i theta, well if z naught has modulus 1, it will look like e power i theta then 3 z squared will look like 3 e power uh, 2 i theta okay, uh, which does not approach uh, 3 if theta is not equal to uh, uh, pi or 2 pi. Okay. If it is not a, or in other words if it is not a multiple of pi uh, this does not approach 3. Okay. So, uh, so, in summary um, that is why the limit does not exist for um, z naught with those properties. Okay. So, that is a brief explanation, but one can um, use uh, this definition okay, to actually prove that the limit uh, does not exist. Okay. So, it is an exercise good exercise to the viewer uh, to use the definition uh, the epsilon delta definition of limit um, to prove that uh, prove the claim okay, uh, which has been made in this example. Okay. So, uh, so, since the viewer is already familiar with the concept of limits from uh, real analysis multivariable calculus in particular, okay, I, will, uh, I will assign this as an exercise to the viewer. Okay. And uh, moving on, uh, there are rules. Okay, uh, the following limit rules. So, these limits exist limit as z goes to z naught f of z exists and it is equal to L 1 and limit as z goes to z naught g of z is equal to L 2. 
okay then uh, the following hold okay the limit as z goes to z naught of uh, f of z plus or minus uh, g of z is equal to l 1 plus or minus l and uh, the second property is that limit as z goes to z naught of f of z times g of z which is also a complex function okay uh, the limit of this uh, is equal to l 1 times l 2 okay third the limit as z goes to z naught of uh, f of z by g of z uh, is equal to l 1 by l 2 provided uh, l 2 is not 0. So, under the assumption that l 2 is not 0, the limit of f of z by g of z also exists as z goes to z naught and that is equal to l 1 by l 2. Okay. So, uh, I, I should hasten to mention that uh, it is true that um, if limit of z goes to z naught f of z exists okay uh, then uh, it is unique okay like in the case of functions from r2 to r2 uh, it's also true for uh, complex functions okay that the limit has to be unique okay so the proof of this statement this fact is also an exercise to the viewer okay uh, and uh, using that uh, these properties all of these properties um, okay uh, well all of these properties hold okay uh, and uh, it's also true that the limit is unique okay now um, so from this uh, what we can say is that the limit as uh, z goes to z naught okay uh, since the limit as z goes to z naught um, this is equal to z naught okay of course uh, the limit of the function z itself is equal to z naught okay for all z naught belongs to c what we can say is that um, by uh, the limit rules then okay limit as z goes to z naught of uh, f of z is equal to f of z naught for any rational function uh, for any rational function f of z and for any z naught belongs to domain of f if f of z here okay uh, looks like uh, 3 plus i z uh, let us say z square plus uh, 2 z minus i by uh, 1 plus i z power 4 minus uh, z z cube plus 1 something like that. Okay. Then uh, the limit as z goes to z naught okay, of f of z where z naught is a point in the domain of f okay this will be uh, by the limit rules this is equal to limit z goes to z naught of 3 plus i z squared plus limit z goes to z naught of um, 2 z minus limit z goes to z naught of i okay uh, divided by etcetera limit z goes to z naught of 1 plus i z power 4 uh, minus limit z goes to i sorry z naught uh, z cube plus limit z goes to z naught of 1. Okay. So, you can use rule 3 to distribute uh, the limit to the numerator and denominator and then you can use rule 1 to distribute it over addition okay, to get that. Okay. And then you can use uh, the rule for multiplication to further uh, distribute uh, these limits and say that this is 3 plus i times limit of z goes to z naught uh, z times limit z goes to z naught of z etcetera. I okay. will not write the whole thing. So, ultimately you are going to get uh, this is equal to f of z naught okay, because each of this is uh, z naught etcetera. Okay. So, you are going to get 
uh, f of z naught. Okay, so uh, so it's true that limit of rational functions as z goes to z naught, where z naught is a point in the domain of f, is going to give you f of z naught as a consequence of these limit rules. Okay, then. Uh, after this, there is the concept of uh, limits involving infinity. Okay. These will be useful to us when we study, let us say, uh, the behavior of functions, uh, okay, uh, maybe uh, when, when the uh, complex variable tends to a certain uh, point, which we will call singularity. Okay, or the behavior of functions as uh, the variable uh, becomes very large in modulus or uh, it tends to infinity. Okay. So, uh, in particular when we study Mobius transformations, uh, we will be using these limits. Okay. So, here is um, okay, uh, we can here is when we can allow or what we mean by uh, allowing L to be infinity. Okay. So, we can allow the limit Okay, the limit L in the definition okay, to be infinity. By doing the following, here is the definition. Let f from, uh, okay, so firstly let d be same setup, d be contained in C and let f be a function from d to C with, uh, okay, and let z naught uh, be a limit point of Okay, so, the same setup as before, okay. we say that the limit as z goes to z naught of f of z is equal to infinity. Okay. So, we are allowing the limit to be infinity, okay. if uh, given m greater than 0, okay, there is a corresponding Uh, delta greater than 0, such that uh, for any z with z belongs to d and 0 strictly less than modulus of z minus z naught strictly less than delta okay, with any such z, the modulus of f of z is greater than m. Okay. So, said otherwise by staying close enough to z naught okay uh, you can guarantee that the modulus of f of z okay for every z uh, in the domain and close enough to z naught okay the modulus of f of z is arbitrarily large okay so um, and another way to say this is that using uh, Okay, so, another way to say this is that, uh, so all that with all that set up, okay, um, we say, okay, we say uh, limit as z goes to z naught f of z is equal to infinity. Okay, uh, if given m greater than 0, uh, there exists a, there is a delta positive such that uh, if z belongs to d intersection the deleted neighborhood of z naught delta okay deleted neighborhood of z naught of radius delta okay uh, then f of z belongs to the set of all uh, w with the modulus of w greater than m Okay, I am just writing what I said in the definition in symbols okay. and the point of doing this is that we recognize this to be uh, the neighborhood of uh, infinity. Okay. So, recall we call such things as uh, neighborhoods of infinity uh, when we studied the topology of the complex plane okay. and this is a neighborhood of infinity. So, in that sense now this definition is similar to uh, this definition okay, uh, where 
we said that f of z belongs to neighborhood of L okay, to, to a epsilon ball around L. So, um, so here we are allowing L to be uh, infinity. So, the epsilon ball around L will look like uh, this although it is not really uh, uh, that epsilon, but it is a neighborhood of uh, infinity. And uh, there is also, so an example is in order of course, uh, the limit as uh, z goes to 0 for example, of 1 by z. So, it is a simple example, because given given m positive, if modulus of z is strictly less than uh, 1 by m, okay, uh, the modulus of 1 by z then will be greater than m, okay, which is what we want. Okay, which is what we want. Okay, and so uh, limit as z goes to zero of f of z is uh, equal to infinity. Okay, this is b b prime um, zero one by m. Okay, so if z belongs to this implies f of z one by z. Okay, uh, belongs to set of all w such that the modulus of w is greater than m. So that's an example. Uh, there is also a concept of uh, letting the variable tend to infinity. Okay. So, uh, we say limit as z goes to infinity. So, now we are letting the variable uh, tend to infinity okay, uh, of f of z is a complex number L. Okay. If given epsilon greater than 0, there exists an m positive. Okay. So, there is an m positive okay, such that uh, the modulus of f of z minus l strictly less than epsilon okay, whenever z belongs to the set of all uh, w such that uh, modulus of w is greater than m. So, whenever we are near infinity, this is a neighborhood of infinity. Okay. Uh, if well, the function should firstly be defined there. Okay. So, I did not write the setup, but we are assuming that f is defined on neighborhoods of infinity. Okay. So, um, whenever z belongs to a neighborhood of infinity, if, if we are able to control the neighborhood of infinity using this m, uh, such that the modulus of f of z minus uh, a complex number L is strictly less than epsilon for any given epsilon. Okay. Then we say that uh, limit as z goes to infinity of f of z is L. Okay. As an example of uh, limit as z goes to infinity, let us consider the following. Okay. So, uh, show that limit as z goes to infinity of uh, 3 z squared by 1 plus i times z squared. Uh, minus z plus 2 okay, uh, is okay, so that show that this limit exists and is equal to uh, 3 by 1 plus i. Okay, so, show. Okay, so uh, in order to see this uh, for large for complex numbers with large modulus for mod z greater than m we will assume m is large. Okay. So, um, close to infinity or in a neighborhood of infinity. Okay. So, what we will do is we will show that the modulus of uh, this expression 3 z squared by 1 plus i times z squared minus z plus 2 okay, minus uh, 3 by 1 plus i. Okay. The modulus of this is actually uh, strictly less than uh, you know any uh, is is arbitrarily less. Okay. Uh, so, uh, then we can conclude that the limit as z goes to infinity by definition uh, of this expression is uh, 3 by 1 plus i. Okay. So, uh, upon simplification this gives me uh, 3 z squared times 1 plus i, I will clear the uh, denominator uh, minus 3 z squared times 1 plus i uh, plus 3 z minus 6 divided by uh, 1 plus i times 1 plus i 
z squared minus z plus 2. Okay. And then uh, this uh, we will store, well uh, I will simplify it further upon cancellation I have 3 z minus 6 by 1 plus i times 1 plus uh, i z squared minus z plus 2. Okay. Uh, I can uh, divide by z squared in the numerator and denominator z is arbitrarily large. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, divide by z squared in the numerator and denominator I get 3 by z minus 6 by z squared divided by 1 plus i times uh, times 1 plus i minus 1 by z plus 2 by z squared in modulus. Okay. So, uh, we will preserve this expression okay, which is uh, the estimation that we want to make. Okay. So, the modulus of this is equal to the modulus of this we will uh, uh, store this as star okay. and then notice that in the denominator we have 1 plus i uh, minus 1 by z plus 2 by z square. Okay. The modulus of this is greater than or equal to the modulus of 1 plus i by triangle inequality this is greater than or equal to the modulus of 1 plus i which is uh, root 2 minus the modulus of 1 by z minus 1 2 by z square. Okay. So, I am using the triangle inequality mod of a minus b is greater than or equal to mod of uh, mod a minus mod b. Okay. So, uh, now notice that uh, when z is greater than or equal to m, okay, 1 by uh, I mean when mod z is greater than or equal to m, 1 by mod z is less than or equal to 1 by m. Okay. So, the modulus of 1 by z minus uh, 2 by z square okay, is less than or equal to 1 by m uh, plus 2 by m square okay. and so uh, this is uh, minus of modulus of 1 by z minus 2 by z square is greater than or equal to minus 1 by m minus 2 by m square. Okay. So, we can substitute this uh, in here okay, to say that the modulus of 1 plus i uh, minus 1 by z plus 2 by z square is greater than or equal to square root 2 uh, plus 1 by m plus 2 by m square. Okay. And uh, taking the reciprocal 1 by uh, 1 plus i minus 1 by z plus 2 by z square in modulus is less than or equal to 1 by square root 2 plus 1 by m plus 2 by m square. Okay. So, uh, now we will bring in star let me go back to the expression star. Okay. So, uh, this piece okay, in the denominator we have uh, said that 1 by that is less than or equal to this quantity. Okay. So, the modulus of so star the expression star is less than or equal to uh, 3 by m plus 6 by m squared because I have 3 by z and minus 6 by z squared by triangle inequality modulus of a minus b is certainly less than or equal to uh, mod a plus mod b. So, I have 3 by m plus 6 by m squared divided by uh, the modulus of 1 plus i is square root 2 uh, and then I have uh, square root 2 plus 1 by m plus 1 by m squared uh, due to the uh, 2 by m squared sorry due to this expression. Okay. And then uh, this is less than or equal to uh, 3 by square root 2 upon simplification uh, m plus 2 uh, divided by this is actually equal to uh, this okay. um, 3, 3 by root 2 times uh, m plus 2 by square root 2 m square plus m plus 2. Okay. So, uh, for large m I can assume this is 3 by root 2 this is less than or equal to 3 by root 2 times 2 m m plus 2 is less than or equal to 2 m that I can assume for large m okay. and likewise m plus 2 in the denominator is uh, less than or equal to uh, 2 m and further uh, I can also assume that uh, m 
2 m is less than or equal to uh, root 2 m squared for large enough. Okay. So, for large enough m, uh, I can assume that 2 m is less than or equal to root 2 m squared. Okay. So, uh, for such uh, an m, for such a large m, I get this is 2 root 2 uh, m squared, which is 3 by 2 m. Okay. So, uh, this is this expression star is less than or equal to 3 by 2 m. Okay. So, uh, for large m, Okay, for large m, which means if mod z is greater than or equal to a very large number, uh, this star is arbitrarily small. So, I can conclude that uh, limit as z goes to infinity of uh, 3 z squared by 1 plus i times z squared minus z plus 2 is indeed equal to 3 pi 1 plus i. Next, let us uh, discuss continuity of uh, complex functions. Okay. So, uh, the concept of continuity once again uh, is the same as the concept of continuity of functions from subsets of R 2 to R 2. Okay. So, I am assuming that the viewer has seen uh, the definition of continuity uh, of functions from uh, subsets of R 2 to R 2 okay. and um, I will uh, nevertheless define uh, continuity for complex functions here again. Okay. So, the setup once again is similar let d contained in C okay. and uh, let uh, or I will say a function f from d to C okay, is said to be continuous. Uh, at a point z naught belongs to d okay if given epsilon positive okay uh, there is a corresponding uh, delta positive such that uh, the modulus of f of z minus f of z naught Okay. So, in this case we are fixing the limit to be the functional value at z naught, okay. we are not allowing it to be some complex number l, okay. but uh, it is a it is a functional value at z naught and z naught f of z naught makes sense, because z naught is a point in the domain okay. and uh, this is strictly less than epsilon whenever the modulus of uh, z minus z naught uh, is strictly less than uh, delta. Okay. So, delta should be strictly positive is the point okay. and um, so if that happens uh, then we say that uh, limit as sorry uh, we say that f is continuous at a point z naught belongs to the domain okay. and uh, there is a corresponding uh, sequential uh, definition of continuity so it says that let d contained in c okay a function f from d to c is said to be continuous okay said to be continuous at a point z naught belongs to d, if for every sequence, okay, so for every sequence that is important, okay, uh, z n, n equals 1 through infinity, okay, so uh, that is the sequence okay, such that uh, z n come from the domain okay, uh, for all n belongs to n. Okay, and z n converges to uh, z naught. Okay, the limit as z n approaches z naught of f of z n 
is equal to f of z naught. Okay. If for every sequence which converges to z naught, the limit of f of z n uh, is equal to uh, f of z naught. Okay. f of z n now is a sequence okay. and, uh, okay. and if this sequence converges to uh, the point f of z naught in the complex plane, okay, then we say that uh, f is uh, f is continuous at z naught. Okay. So, notice that this limit here okay, um, it refers to the limit of the sequence f of z n. So, it is a sequence f of z n n equals 1 through infinity. Okay. And if uh, so that is a, a sequence in the complex plane and its convergence is written in this fashion. Okay. So, um, in this event you say f is continuous okay and uh, the both these are one and the same okay both these definitions are, are the same the equivalence of this is something we are not going to prove here okay but uh, these two definitions of continuity are one and the same okay and um, a function is said to be continuous okay if it is uh, continuous at every point in its domain okay so we have defined continuity at a point okay and if the function is continuous at every point in its domain we simply say that it is continuous Okay. So, without any uh, further adjectives. Okay. So, uh, uh, examples well uh, we know examples of continuous functions already um, polynomials okay, of complex variables okay, and uh, rational functions. are continuous functions. They are continuous at every point in the domain, and so they are uh, continuous functions. Okay, and it's also true that uh, if f and g are continuous at a point z naught, okay, then uh, f plus or minus g, f times g, okay, uh, are also continuous at z naught okay. and uh, if f g of z naught is non zero okay, then uh, f by g is also continuous at z naught. So, uh, next we will uh, look at some important uh, theorems which we are uh, for continuous functions which we are going to uh, use uh, during the course. Okay. Um, so, the first of them uh, gives an alternative uh, characterization of continuous functions. Okay. So, uh, a function let, uh, let d be a subset of C. Okay. Uh, a function f from d to c uh, is continuous if and only if uh, the inverse image of an open set in C is open in D. Okay. So, we will have many occasions uh, where we will uh, use this characterization of continuous functions. Okay. So, uh, a function which is continuous at every point in its domain uh, has to satisfy the 
property that the inverse image of an open set in C is open in the domain with respect to the domain. Okay. And uh, likewise, uh, um, if that property is satisfied, then the function is automatically continuous. Okay. So, here is the proof of uh, this theorem. Okay. So, um, we will first prove the direction that um, if a function is continuous, then um, the inverse image of an open set in C is open in D. Okay. So, suppose uh, u is an open subset of C okay. Uh, okay. and if the inverse image of u okay, uh, is empty, okay, then of course, uh, empty set is open in D. Okay, uh, okay. Then, since this is open in D, okay, the statement is true. Okay. So now, if f inverse of u is non-empty, okay, uh, let you can pick a point in f inverse of u. Let w is w naught is equal to f of z naught. Okay. Uh, since u is open in C, okay, uh, there is uh, an R positive okay, uh, such that uh, for this f of z naught, which now belongs to u, because z naught is in f inverse of u, uh, this will belong to u. Okay. So, what you can do is, since u is open, you can find an r positive, such that the ball of radius r around w naught is contained in u. Okay. So, we are using the uh, fact that u is an open set in C okay. and um, by continuity. Okay. So, since f is continuous at z naught. Okay. Uh, there is uh, a delta positive such that uh, the modulus of f of z minus f of z naught namely w naught okay, uh, is strictly less than um, r whenever uh, the modulus of uh, z minus uh, z naught is strictly less than uh, delta. Okay. So, I should say whenever uh, 0 is strictly less than uh, modulus of z minus z naught uh, strictly less than delta and z belongs to d. Okay. We want z to belong to the domain for f of z to be defined. So, uh, f is continuous. Uh, we have uh, this property, uh, I mean this is the definition of uh, continuity at z naught. Okay. So, uh, so, what this says is that uh, such as z naught, okay, the image of such as z naught is in B w naught r. Okay. So, i e uh, whenever z belongs to B z naught delta intersection uh, d okay uh, f of z belongs to b w naught r okay what that means is that the image i e the image of b z naught delta intersection d okay is contained in uh, b w naught r Okay, which is contained in uh, uh, u. Okay, so uh, okay, so that tells that uh, f inverse, okay, f inverse of u uh, contains uh, b z naught delta intersection uh, d. Okay, so uh, so, it is open. 
So, f inverse of u is open in uh, D. Okay, it's this is an open set in. I mean, this is an open ball and hence an open set in uh, the complex plane. And when you intersect it with D, uh, this set is open in D. Okay, so f inverse of u uh, then now uh, is open in D. Okay, that uh, okay, that's the proof of the forward direction. Okay, and then. Um, suppose in the other direction suppose that the property is satisfied we want to show that f is continuous so uh, suppose the inverse image okay uh, of any open set uh, in uh, in c okay is open in inverse image uh, under f of course okay uh, is open in uh, d okay you let uh, z not belong to d we want to show that f is continuous there okay uh, and let w not uh, belong to f of z not or w not equal f of z not and uh, since B W naught R is an open set in C. Uh, there is a delta positive such that uh, the inverse image, we are assuming that the inverse image of any open set is open in D. Okay. So, the inverse image of B W naught R Okay, that is an open set uh, is open in D. Okay. And since uh, uh, z naught belongs to okay, z naught is f inverse of is contained in f inverse of w naught. So, it, it is contained in this set okay. and since z naught belongs to f inverse of b w naught r. Okay, which is an open set now. Okay, uh, there is uh, a delta positive. Okay, there is a ball of radius delta uh, centered at z naught, which is contained in this set. Okay, so there is a delta positive uh, such that uh, the ball of radius delta around z naught is contained in an open set. In this open set. Okay, uh, so I should say uh, D intersection this because we don't know if all of this is in uh, D. Okay, so D intersection that is contained in that. Okay, uh, so uh, what that says is that uh, this implies um, f of B Z naught delta intersection D is contained in B W naught R, which is nothing but the definition of continuity at Z naught. Okay, so this implies F is continuous at Z naught. Okay, and that proves this theorem.